breaking news right now in South Nashville where there are 1,000 people still without power. The entire NES Craighead substation is down right now. That's off Nolensville Pike on Dunn Avenue. After a loud boom, a witness said he saw a man on fire on top of the substation. The man was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. This is what the scene looked like when News Channel 5's Gary Pakula was there. Our photojournalist rolled up and saw NES crews working to get the power restored. Breaking news now. Two people were shot and killed while sitting on their front porch in East Nashville. News Channel 5's Alexander Cohen live at the East Police Precinct this morning. And Alexander, are there any suspects? There are no suspects. People at the James Casey Housing Complex aren't really speaking with police right now, so they have limited information on exactly what happened. They have not released the identities of those two homicide victims, but police officers did confirm that one is 22 years old, the other is in his early 30s. According to the captain on duty, one man died at the scene. The other was rushed to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police on scene said the two men were just sitting on a porch on on South 8th Street when an unknown gunman opened fire on them. They believe the suspect took off in a vehicle. To put things into perspective, in one week there's been nine shootings, five people have been killed, and last Friday three people were shot in the exact same public housing complex. One person died there at that scene. Obviously, officers here at the East Precinct have their hands full as they're working on all of these investigations. If you have any idea who shot the two men on the porch, call police immediately. Reporting live in East Nashville, Alexander Cohen, News Channel 5. Alexander, thank you. In another deadly shooting investigation in North Nashville, the victim there shot around 1.30 in the morning along 25th Avenue North and later died at the hospital. That victim was found at the Cumberland View Public Housing. No suspect description right now and no arrests have been made in that case. A couple of miles away on Beasley Street, a man was shot twice in his car. Just at random, police believe the victim is expected to survive. Officers say the suspect approached the victim and just started firing shots. For some reason, the suspect dropped his gun in the victim's car before taking off. And now investigators are hoping some nearby surveillance video will help them solve that case. As soon as we can get a hold of that video, we'll pass that along to you. Amy. Well, a car caught on fire on Gallatin Pike in East Nashville, and then that fire spread to a nearby building. Police are investigating right now to figure out exactly what happened. And now we want to show you some video a viewer sent in to us. This is when the car was actually on fire. You can see those flames. We have learned that the car was stolen. Officers have not located who was driving the car at this point. And the verdict is in in the murder of Midstate mom, Nikki Burgess. A jury deliberated for less than two hours before finding Caleb County Cannon rather guilty of first degree murder. Burgess, the mother of Cannon's son, vanished back in 2014. Her body was never found. Caleb Cannon was given an automatic life sentence. And two people are behind bars this morning for the senseless murder of a Krispy Kreme delivery driver. Al Baker was shot to death December 4th outside the Mapco on Donaldson Pike. Police say Baker was outside the gas station when Daquan Fields and Savion Wilson robbed it. Investigators say Fields shot Baker as Fields was fleeing the Mapco. Fields was arrested and charged last night, and Wilson has also been indicted for murder. He was already in jail for a crime spree that happened later in December. Check newschannel5.com for updates. Happening right now, officials are still trying to find out how many homes were destroyed by all this flash flooding that happened in Sumner County late last week. In Tennessee, here's interesting fact, there are no state programs to help with disaster relief. Instead, residents would have to rely on federal help. Unfortunately, though, Friday's flash flooding, since it was so quick, does not meet federal requirements. Sumner County emergency management officials are hoping to now get some small loans from the Small Business Association to help out with that. All right, the big story this morning is sports, and you might need a, a note for work to kind of get in a little bit late after the historic win at Bridgestone last night. And uh, Dr. Nash has tweeted out his, uh, his little note so you can...
print that off if you want to <laughs> see if that'll work. But your Nashville Predators will compete for the Stanley Cup. It's just huge news, the biggest sports news in Nashville. And New Channel 5's Dan Kennedy joins us this morning. Dan, you were inside. It must have just been electric. I'm still running on adrenaline and one cup of coffee. Two hours of sleep after that game, but it was one game to see. I'm telling you, best sporting event I've ever attended and uh, was fortunate enough to be inside there with 17,000 other fans. Got my tickets on that NHL app, and every morning at 10 o'clock on home games, uh, they have like 100 allotted tickets that they give out to 100 random fans, and I was fortunate enough to be one last night. And it wasn't just those inside appreciating the game, of course, those watching at home as well, but there were thousands of others, including Steve Hayslip and family watching outside on the plaza and the lawn. Uh, and then, of course, once the game led out, there was a huge party on Broadway. And guess who we caught up on Broadway with? The mayor. So tonight I saw the best sign. It said this. It said it's our town, our time, our team. And I think that really summed it up. The press just totally brought it out for us tonight. All right, so our opponent is to be determined, but we do know that Nashville will be hosting games three and four, the Stanley Cup final, and possibly a game six uh, if it is required. I got to tell you, some of the loudest moments last night uh, included at the beginning when Eddie George, Ryan Johansson, and Kevin Fiala all came out. And of course, two of them uh, injured players with the Predators and waved their rally towels. Uh, Stephen Amy, a couple other loud moments last night when Colton Sissons got his hat trick and every Everybody threw their hats on the ice, mm -hmm. and then somebody went a step further and threw a catfish on the ice. Sweet. Ah. <laughs> it's always a fish. Love it. You know what? I love the fact that Mayor Barry was down there with the crowd, you know, in the Preds mm -hmm. jersey, not yeah. not in some skybox, you know, stuffed shirt kind of thing. I mean, down there mixing with all the fans. Uh, I, that was very cool to see. We also saw uh, former Governor Phil Bredesen in the crowd last night. So it's always a who's who down here in Smashville. Yeah. It is, and we can officially say duck hunting season is over in Smashville. <laughs> All right, Dan, thank you.